morning to everyone. Good morning to you. Good morning to everyone. We are so excited that we have reached another day that we can wake up and be a part of this worship experience. This morning, we are very excited about the very fact that the Holy Spirit is here with us and that we are ready to do God's bidding this morning. So I say to each one of you, wake up and stretch your spiritual muscles and know that God is ever present with us. God is with us. And this morning, we put our hands in his hands. And we simply ask that each one of you, as you are getting ready for the day, that you can wake up. Come on, wake up and stretch your spiritual muscles and know that God is with us during this boot camp hour. And I ask of you right now that whatever you do and whatever you say, remember you're beginning your day with God. So again, we invite each one of you to this worship experience knowing that whatever is about to happen for you today is through his Holy Spirit. Remember this morning that mornings are better when you talk to God first. We believe that mornings are better when you talk to God first. And we also believe that what God has for us, it's what God has for us, it's for us. So this morning, I want to thank you for joining me on Bible Boot Camp, and I want to also thank you for being a part of this worship experience. Well, I'm so glad I'm doing something new with uh, Periscope this morning, and um, my all, all my friends on Periscope who are on, I want you to know that I love your feedback. I would love your feedback about how I'm working uh, uh, you seeing me. And so in this, I want to thank my Periscope family. They were there with me from the beginning to the end. So right now, I want to ask that you just bow your heads right where you are as we look to him who's the author and finisher of our faith. Let's pray together. Father, again, we come before you, first of all, thanking you for being an awesome God to us. Thanking you for being great to us. Thanking you for all that you've done and what you will do. And this very morning, we put our hands in your hands, knowing that whatever we do today, it will prosper. Today, we're talking a lot about running the race. And we're asking you, Lord, that you help us to endure. So right now, I'm asking that whatever is said and done be pleasing to you. And for all those that took the time to wake up and to worship and to have a devotional time with you, we ask for a double blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. And so this morning, we want to thank you for joining us. This whole month, we've been talking about repentance. We've been talking about repentance, understanding, and knowing that God wants each and every one of us to turn our lives around, to start our time, to start our moment with him, and to be, uh, uh, to be in a place where we're living a life of obedience. And we believe that we can live a life of obedience. We believe that we can repent. You know, when we talked about this from the very beginning of this month, we said that repentance is all about change. Repentance is about our change of direction, our change of thought, and our change of behavior. And we know that God wants us to live a life not of regret. No, God doesn't want us to live a life of regret. God wants us to live a life of uh, change. And let's not live a life of regret, but let's live a life of change. So this morning, I want to share with you that one of the ways, one of the ways that we can live a life of repentance is recognizing who we need. You know, I received a, a text from someone the other day uh, or a correspondence from someone the other day that said, you know, Pastor, you talk a lot about what's going to happen when Jesus comes or living for when Jesus comes. And I do understand that. The person said, well, tell us how. And today I really want to talk to you about how to run uh, uh, run and endure. I want to talk about how to run and endure. But first of all, one of the most important aspects of our lives right now is recognizing how much we need Jesus. You know, when you think about uh, waking up in the mornings and starting your day off, we think about the fact that we need him more than ever before. But recognizing this, that new mercies he's giving us each and every day. He has been great. Uh, he's been faithful to us. And because he's been faithful to us, we recognize that we need a God who has been faithful and will be faithful. The question is, will we be faithful to him? Or oh, we need him more than ever before. And so today we put our hands in his hands, simply saying to God, God, we need you more than ever before.
I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee. And we're taking this time to recognize that we need him more than ever before. We need him in our lives. We need him in uh, everything that we do. We need him in our decision making. We need him when we go out. We need him when we stay in. We need him every hour. And this very morning, it is proven again that we need him more than ever before. Our issue is that we got to stop trying to do this on our own. we got to stop trying to live on our own and make these decisions on our own. We've got to give ourselves to him, knowing and recognizing that it's all about God in our lives. It's all about not what we do, but who we do it for. And this morning, we simply say, God, we do it for you. I want to share this word with you this morning, a special word this morning, a word that will help us to recognize and understand that we need him more than ever. But God is asking us also to be the disciples that he needs us to be. He wants us to be stronger than ever, than we've ever been. He wants us to be um, just the kind of individuals that he can depend on. And so he's asking us to be true, true disciples. And when we, when we talk about being disciples, we talk about being disciples, uh, we talk about being disciples on our jobs, we talk about de- being disciples in our homes, we talk about being disciples no matter where you are. And a lot of times we are waiting 
on the pastors to be disciples or we're waiting for others to be disciples when God is saying, you know what? I need you to be my disciple. So today we're talking about watching what the others have done in their faith as patriarchs and now each one of us having to do the same. When I think about being a disciple, I always think about uh, living my life the way God wants me to live so that as I run this race, people would be drawn to Jesus Christ. Right now, I want to share this word with you. I'm going to ask you if you just bow your heads with me as we look at this word, recognizing who God is in our lives. So, Father, we want to thank you for this word we're about to receive. This word that helps us to recognize that you are watching us live out our lives. So help us to live out, our, uh, live out our lives the way you want us to. Help us to run with endurance. Bless as I ask in this word, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to share this word with you. It's a word that comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. The word of God tells us, since, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Wow. Now, I want you to look at this text and I want you to look at this text just one more time. The word in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 is saying, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. You know, before you can understand this text, you got to understand that there's a Hebrews 11 before there's a Hebrews 12. And I want you to take some time out today, some time out today, to look at Hebrews chapter 11 and then go back to this text, Hebrews chapter 12. In Hebrews chapter 11, we call it the faith chapter. And in this chapter, it tells us that what faith is all about. Faith is about believing something you cannot see. And I know that is difficult to believe in something that we can't see. Can you imagine time after time again, we're telling uh, people to believe in a God that they can't see. Now, we believe in the evidence of God. But the Bible tells us that those who have faith, they have faith and they have faith in something that they can't see where God is rewarding us greatly because faith is believing in something without full evidence in seeing. When I look at this, I recognize that God is the kind of God that will explain to us individual or show us individuals who have believed. When you look at the chapter of uh, uh, Hebrews 11, you see these great patriarchs before us. You see how they talked about uh, Noah and they talked about Rahab and they talked about um, all these great patriarchs who have stood the test of time in their belief and who have made it. Now, if God gives us the the wall of um, the wall of, of fame in spirituality, He gives us all these individuals in Hebrews twelve, who I mean in Hebrews eleven, who believed. And I know it's it's tough to believe sometimes when we look at the world around us and we look at what's going on around us. It's tough to believe. It's tough to believe something you can't see. Someone says, "Hey, your new car is outside." Yep, is it? Well, if my new car is outside, then um, where is it? Seeing is believing. But in Christianity and in your relationship with God, faith is believing. And when I look at this, I ask myself the question. Look at Moses. Look at Joseph. Look at Enoch. Look at all these individuals like Abraham. Look at these individuals like Moses who, who their faith showed them or dictate to them how they should be and where they should go. And when I ask you the question today, how's your faith? How would you answer? Because our faith ought to be as strong as their faith. That's why when you look at the word, the Bible tells us 
in uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, who are the witnesses we're talking about? It's the witnesses are these individuals who have lived before us. Not that they are living now looking at us and witnessing how we're living. It's saying that their lives has been a witness. Their lives have been a witness that if they could do it, we can do it too. If they can walk the way they ought to walk, we can walk the way we ought to walk. You know, when I look at these individuals, I also recognize that their lives weren't perfect. We look at individuals like uh, Abraham, who lied. Noah, who was a drunk. Come on now. We look at Moses, who killed. We look at Jacob, who was a thief. We look at all these individuals who were mentioned as those who were great witnesses for us. So if they can make it, we can make it too. If they can walk with God, we can walk with God. If they can uh, strive, then we can strive. If they can uh, run the race, then we can run the race. The Bible tells us that because they did it, then we can do it too. But he's giving us a way to do it. I want everyone to know, all, all those who are listening to me by the sound of the Spirit's voice, that everyone who's listening can make it right now. But God is telling us to lay aside every weight. That's what he's saying. He's saying to lay aside every weight, lay aside every weight that so easily beset us, lay aside every sin, lay aside every issue. Because when you're running a race, you can't run a race with weight on you. You got to be light on your feet. You got to you got to run this race and know that nothing is going to stop you from reaching the finish line. You see, if you're running a race, you got to run this race without heavy clothing. You got to run this weight, this race without heavy weights. That means if there's individuals in your life that's holding you back from winning this race, then you got to put those individuals off. If there are things in your life that you're holding on to that's going to keep you from being that disciple that you need to be, then throw it off. You cannot win this race with stuff on you. So lay aside the weight. Maybe lay aside the money, lay aside the worry, lay aside the relationships, lay aside the stuff that's in your way. Because in when you're walking a walk with God, you've got to run it, you've got to walk it, you've got to move forward without this heavy weight with you. Listen, when we talk about living a life of repentance, when we talk about living a life of change, when we talk about living a life of uh, a, a new direction or a new thought and a new behavior, we're really talking about walking with God the way he wants us to walk without the stuff on our back. And, you know, it's sometimes hard to get that monkey off our back. Sometimes it's hard to get that sin issue off our back. But the word of God tells us that we need to lay aside every weight, every sin that so easily beset us. And I know it's difficult because the word tells us, look, the word tells us that every one of us have messed up. Hmm? The word of, is telling us that the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. But we are walking in sin and we, we, we all have sinned. We all have messed up. But God is also telling us to put it aside because he's got something for us at the finish line. Hmm? So we need to put aside all of the stuff. We need to put aside all of the, the, the weights that so easily beset us because God has something set for us. So let us run with endurance. Let us run this race. We've got to run this race like we've never ran it before. And I really believe that God is giving us the opportunity to run this race because he knows that he can trust us to finish this race. I believe that God is trusting you. I believe that God is trusting you that you can endure. I want to tell you this story. Uh, it, it's a story of the fact that I, I, I know that it's not easy to run this race, but if you practice, you can make it. And I want to tell you a story of uh, a person very dear to me. When I, when I, got in contact with this person years ago as we began a new relationship. You know, she made a comment to me, you know, I'm talking about already, that she wanted to be a marathon. And I, I, I saw this individual buy books on it and read up on being a, mar a mar marathoner. Or I, I looked at 
this uh, this goal or this fervor to do this. But for her to run this marathon, she had to get out there and run. You can't just read about being a marathon runner. You've got to be a marathon runner. And in her later years, she began to get up and walk first and then start running and walking and then running. And I was so proud to see uh, my wife run two miles first and then three miles and then four miles and then five miles and then began to run this race in a sense that as she ran this race, she began to endure not only 10 miles, but then 13 miles. And when I saw her run this, I believed that she can run even further the full marathon. You see, but it didn't start by reading the word. Just It didn't start by just reading the word. It started by getting out there and living what she was reading. She read it. She accepted it. And she ran. The word is how we start. We read the word. We understand who gave us the word. And then we, began to, we begin to run and walk the life we're supposed to live and endure until we reach the end. But I got to tell you, you can't run this race with stuff on you. You can't run this race with this weight on you. You got to run this race knowing that God is with us every step of the way. So lay aside all the weight that's on us because the patriarchs of old went before us. They endured so we can endure also. So today I share with you that each one of us can endure and God is expecting us to run this race and to run it and win it in Jesus Christ. for each one of you i want to pray for each one of you that we'll be able to run that race and endure right now i'm going to ask you to just to bow your heads right where you are and to send your prayer requests others are saying that they want to be stronger than they've ever been others are asking for physical strength others asking for spiritual strength um there's a prayer for uh Lorianne who uh, who is suffering right now. We want to pray for that individual. We want to pray for Mahdi. We want to pray for uh, Ken Walker. Uh, Marsha, we want to pray for. We want to pray for uh, Jewel and Natasha Watts. We want to pray for all of these individuals as they are sending out their prayer requests right now for prayer. 
And for those who are with us, if you'd like to send your prayer request via email, you can send it to fcmbootcamp at gmail.com. That's fcmbootcamp at gmail.com. We want to pray for you. And we believe more prayer, more power. This morning, you know it's better when you talk to God first. And so we want to talk to God at this very moment, knowing that God can do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Let's pray together. Father, again, we come before you thanking you for being an awesome God to us. We thank you for all that you've done and what you will do. We bring before you individuals such as Natasha, Lorna, Jewel, Ken. We bring before you Madi, Vivia, Kay. We bring before you Hollis. We bring before you all these individuals who are asking for special prayer at this time. We bring before you those who are asking for strength and endurance for faith strength to run the race. We're asking you to be with Brianna uh, in her severe back pain. We beg of you, Lord, that you'll be with um, uh, all those who are struggling with uh, finances right now. We we ask you to be with uh, Jeff uh, and uh, Jeff Jules. We ask you to be with uh, Melanie Weber. We're asking you to be with uh, Sonia as she's taking her test today. Uh, traveling mercies for Vernak and Ada and with their family and unspoken prayer requests. We know and believe, Lord, that you're asking us to live the life that we're supposed to live, knowing that your coming is soon. But Lord, we want to run the race and endure. So we're asking for a double portion of your Holy Spirit this very morning, that we will walk with you and live a life of repentance. As we looked at this text today from Hebrews chapter 12, we recognize that Noah did it, so we can do it. Lord, we know that Enoch did it, so we can do it. We know that Rahab did it, so we can do it. And because we have such a cloud of witnesses that have done this, we're asking you to help us that we will surely lay aside every weight of sin, every issue that, that, that we've been holding on to, and that we will run this race and we will endure because the race that was set before us was won by others. We're asking now that your Holy Spirit will be with us, bless us, guide us, walk with us today. And we're asking that as we live this life of repentance, that we'll live it with you in Jesus name. Amen. And so this morning, we want to thank you for joining us. But I want to give you the, uh, the picture of the day of this word of the day. And this word of the day is all about Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ. I need you to know that whosoever drinketh of the water that God, that Jesus will give them will never go thirsty again. So I'm not talking about Coca-Cola. I'm talking about the water of life. So this morning, we ask you to share with someone else Jesus Christ. Be that disciple today. Be that individual today. Be that individual that's willing to walk with God and be the Christian and be the individual that God wants us to be. We can win this race, and we can win it with Jesus Christ. Be blessed today, and share this with someone else. And we're reaching our last two days of Bible Boot Camp, and I'm going to ask each one of you to take the time out to be a part of our ministry by supporting our ministry, not only through uh, your prayers, but also through donations, if the Holy Spirit leads you to do that. So in this, I ask you that you can go to our uh, Full Circle Ministries page or to our Full Circle TV page on PastorPaulGram.com and to take the time out and support us some way, somehow. So this morning, we want to thank you for being a part of this worship experience. And being a part of this worship experience simply says that today we start our time with God. Be blessed, everyone, and let's walk with him.